Jets fans, can you hear anything? Because I can't. Oh boy. It is an honor and a privilege to be making this selection for the best team in the NFC North. The best team in the NFC. The best team in the NFL. The Bears. This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Welcome, 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 welcome to Chicago. Coming from the 606 Media Studios, this is the TCSF Podcast with E-Rock and Big Z. Yes, sir. Back in action, baby. Back in action. Episode 192 is brought to you by 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, and Great Clothing Company. Don't forget to go to gritclothingco.com and get your official TCSF Podcast t-shirts. Search for keyword True Chicago and use our promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15% off your entire Order that is true fan 15. Go and get your shirts now, right now, like right, right now, this minute. Okay, I'm cool. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, X, hit that subscribe button. If you're on your favorite podcast app, remember to give us a five star review and drop uh, you know, some comments to tell us how much you love us, how much you love our voice, how much you love our faces, all that stuff. Give us that review and those five stars, and you can also subscribe and uh, support the show. With the monthly subscription at anchor.fm uh, backslash true Chicago sports fans, go over there and click on the support button. Uh, and if you can subscribe for as little as 99 cents a month, hey, JC made it. <laughs> All right, boys. In, yeah. In this live episode, the dust has settled on the Chicago Bears draft. It is time for me and the boys to break it down. So let's go. It is football all day today. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? Look, I'm, I'm great, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I know it's football today. I know this. I think we all know this. But <laughs> but I got to mention one thing before we really get deep. Yeah. The Chicago White Sox have doubled their win total by with a sweep, <laughs> with a sweep of the Tampa Bay Rays, and now they're up to six Wins on the season, ladies and gentlemen. Give a round of applause to the Southsiders. Give y'all look at that hand. Oh, I love it. I love it. Look, y- y'all have y'all need something, right? Like something. You can't be sitting there going through life that way that you were. Maybe you're gonna get like 11 fans now instead of 10. It's dog day, so they have a lot of fans today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, look, um, th- look I- right now. You know, me and JC went back and forth about it last week, talking about who was going to be the first overall pick, whether it would be Caleb, Jay Daniels, who they should pick at number nine. And I think, you know, what what I was saying was that there's no way they can pass on Caleb. And they didn't. Right. If Dunze is there at that, at that spot, that's who they got to pick. It, it, it was the most obvious thing. Now, you know, for the sake of argument, you you got to have – something there where you kind of go back and forth. And, and I completely understand that you have to make a case for other players, but this was like the most obvious, you know, a uh, pick that you could make. And, and everyone knew it. It was the worst kept secret in football. Yeah. hundred percent worst kept secret in football. Uh, you know, Ryan Poles did his homework, did his job. And uh, he, you know, they were saying that he knew as of last, uh, last season, midway through the season, uh, he knew that he was going to start making these moves uh, to put his stamp on his team uh, because it is his team. And, you know, he cleared house. He cleared um, a lot of these bad contracts. He made a lot of trades to get guys out of here to get draft picks. Uh, we got, you know, won the lottery ticket when Lovey won a game for us at the end of the season that got us the number one pick. Um, you know, we trade that pick and we get a haul. I mean, just like literally every single thing went right for Ryan Poles. And this man has a horseshoe the size of the Chicago bean right now. <laughs> it, yeah, it's it's really far up there. I mean, look, look uh, I think we we knew again. Um, we saw we knew Caleb was working out already with the with the Bears. We saw yeah. Keenan, Keenan Allen show up at the USC Pro Day. Right. Um, we've already seen Caleb working with DJ Moore at UFC. Okay, um, him and, and Adunze. Yes, they were on the same flight. Everyone knew. Okay. But also, when Adunze got drafted, 
where's Caleb? He's like, he's excited. He's geeked. He jumped into the little uh, box where the media box that they, were, they had going on back there. Yeah. And he was like, you know, they were ready. They're like, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, look, I, I think you, you're looking at a new era of Bears football. You're talking about the number one overall pick who's supposed to be, you know, uh, uh, when you look at prospect as high as Andrew Luck, the highest rated guy since Andrew Luck, a really, really smart, intelligent, well-spoken uh, young rookie ride receiver to go along with who you spent the the fourth uh, fourth round pick on to get Keenan Allen, right? You, it, it just, everything seems to be coming together the way it needs to be. JC, you still ready? You ready? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I 100% agree. I mean, like I said, the, the only thing for me, like I said, throughout the whole process was make sure you do your due diligence. Make sure you look at all the quarterbacks. You know, I, I just didn't want them to get tunnel vision, focus in on Caleb, 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 only Caleb, you know. And like I said, you know, the, the one thing that kind of upset me was they didn't go to uh, Jaden Daniels' uh, pro day. But by that time, it had seemed like they had already made up their minds. They were going with Caleb. So, but that was my only thing. You know, my only thing is, like I said, just do the due diligence. Make sure you do all your all your homework. Go through all the files. Go through all the teachers, all the coaching staff, all the um, trainers and people in the building that Caleb, you know, was involved with and dealt with. You know, like I said, my my only thing. And like I said, you know, if Caleb was the pick, I was 100% on board with that. I'm fine with that. My only thing, like I said, was just make sure you don't just get the blinders and and don't look at the other prospects as well. Um, but like I said, I, I think they did their due diligence. They did go to, um, I think it was J.J. McCarthy's, you know, uh, pro day and Bo Nix's pro day. Which I think the Bo Nix's pro day uh, was more to look at uh, the center Jackson Powers Johnson, um, but like I said, you know, to me, yeah, it was it was one of the you know, and thank God Atlanta, you know, Atlanta, <laughs> and between Atlanta and New York, I'm like you guys literally screwed everyone else in the draft and gave us exactly what we wanted with our second round one pick at number nine, yeah. Rome I mean, Atunze. Yeah, to to me it was more of like I said once once the fourth quarterback was off the board like we we kind of figured and, and you know when we were talking about this last week you know I kind of said I, I really thought Marvin Harrison would go to Arizona he did you know then it was a question of the Chargers do they go Joe Alt or do they go wide receiver because that was the question that was the mm-hmm. one where it was like okay, they could do either or. It's 50-50 to me, even though you know Harbaugh loves to run the ball, and you would honestly sit there and go, okay, maybe it's more 70-30 because Harbaugh just loves running the ball. But the Atlanta one, to me, was the shocker. Even even though we all thought that Atlanta should have went defense, they should have taken a pass rusher, that was the one that shocked me where it, and, and don't get me wrong. I really am high on Penix. I think Penix is a great quarterback, but it was one of those where I'll be honest with you. When that pick came in, I started laughing. Cause it was like, good, good to Kirk cousins who everywhere he has been, has talked about, I, I want to finish my career in Washington. Then he goes to the Vikings I want to finish my career as a Viking. Then he goes to Atlanta and Atlanta says, you may not finish your career here. You know what I mean? And we're taking your replacement already. So to me, that was the most laughable situation because again, you pay a guy $200 million or whatever they pay Kirk cousins. And then they draft his replacement. Um, Well, here's, here's the thing is that, Number one, I, I thought it was really funny because people kept talking about how Ryan Pace is part of that front office. He's one of the like the head scouter, scouting person or whatever. I thought that was just hilarious in general because people were already making that connection with the last time that that happened when the Bears got the draft and then they got Trubisky right after that. And they're like, hey, what's going on here? You know, um, but 
it, it's funny because you did see Kirk Cousins come out and say, I was as shocked as anyone when they took that pick. Now, it's already came out. Ryan Poles came out and said that the Atlanta GM did contact him to try to get up into that number one spot. I don't understand. Like, if you were that desperate to get this guy. And look, I, I think as far as a quarterback goes, he's a good quarterback. My concern is always going to be those knees. Those those he's had an East ACL and in each knee. He's a he's I, I also believe he's one of the older quarterbacks at number uh, uh um 24 years old, right? So one of the things that uh, and I don't remember his name, but the GM of Atlanta was like, "Well, if he's got to sit a couple of years, 3 or 4 years, that's a good problem to have." That's a terrible problem to have. If you're going to make that choice, you go for one of the youngest quarterbacks that you're going to have to sit behind Kirk Cousins for a couple of years. I don't understand that pick at all. Nobody does. I mean, Atlanta's probably sitting there. The only thing that I can figure is that, and, and the only thing that I have heard is that their head coach it was, was absolutely in love with him. So they're like, we got to do whatever we can to get him. Kirk is 35 years old. Is he going to make it to his to the end of his contract, that four year, like nine billion dollar contract that Atlanta gave him? Absolutely not. I don't. I don't think so. You know. So you look at the carousel of quarterbacks that Atlanta's gone through in the last couple of years. Um, you know, it's good for them that they have a club of quarterbacks, but it was just a really weird move considering they thought that Kirk Cousins was going to be the guy, and I'm sure a lot of, a lot of Atlanta fans thought the same thing. A hundred million for a guy that's coming back from ACL tear. Uh, and then oh, draft a quarterback. Achilles. I'm sorry, Achilles. Achilles. Sorry, Achilles. Uh, yeah, that is just that's it's wild. And I, you know, once they made that pick, I was jumping for joy because I knew exactly what the Bears are getting after that. I I can't worry about Atlanta. I I can't. You know what I'm saying? I can't worry about Atlanta. I can't worry about New York. The entire time, I'm like. It's going to happen. We're going to wish into existence. We're going to wish into existence. We already got a number one guy we've been talking about forever. And now we need Adunze to show up on the board for us. And that's exactly what happened once that, that pick came in. I mean, obviously, you know, grading the, the number one overall pick, it's got to be an A for doing their homework, an A for picking, you know, a player that uh, has proven to uh in college football showing you that he can actually play the same games yes he's had some ups and downs what quarterback has it you know um you know his the main concern was that he he fumbles okay well he he had no offensive line over there so he was running for his life kind of like justin was last year here so yeah you're going to fumble because you're trying to be a playmaker that's that's going to happen you're trying to extend the play so that's going to happen so for me for the bears uh for ryan poles on the caleb i i grade that as an a Oh, um, that's a home run. I'm sorry. That's that's an absolute home run. 100. percent You you know we talk about doing due diligence. We talk about looking at other players. I mean, like like you, you mentioned before, he knew he was picking Caleb. I knew, and you knew, and everyone else knew that they were picking Caleb Williams months ago. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'll, I'll say about Caleb is that because of the NIL that we have in college sports now, which allowed Reggie Bush to get his Heisman trophy back, um, which was amazing. I mean, there's, it, it's, there's so many things I can equate that to. I'm not going to do it on this show, but there's so many things I can equate that to, um, you know, the legality of things, which previously were not legal. And now people are being pen people that were previously penalized for it should not be penalized anymore, but that's neither right. here nor there or up here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know with that nil deal caleb was already living large yeah. and, and he's got this dope ass condo or or whatever it is in in la right ryan clark when they went he was on the pivot podcast they brought everyone over there they showed him and he just seemed like confident but not cocky right like i feel like he's a guy that's very sure of himself he knows he was raised right you know he 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 fits the culture I think that Ryan Poles is trying to bring to the Chicago Bears, um, when you look at the moves that that Ryan has made going into not just this season, but the previous season, trying to line everything up. I mean, these are these are chess level moves when everyone else is playing checkers. I mean, you think about the fact that what they got from Carolina out of that pick and what they ended up with. I mean, you you can't, and they have another pick. I think what the second round pick next second year, right next year, yeah. So, yeah. come on, you, you, this, you, this is ridiculous. This is exciting. Yeah, we got Caleb Williams, Roma Dunze, Montez Sweat, um, Keenan Allen, mm -hmm. 
and what would be the other? Oh, who else? Yeah, Bates, Bates from and Bates, uh, and Bates from in the fifth round. round, right? Yeah, in the fifth round. That is a haul, and we still got another pick next year. Thank you, Lovey. Thank you, Carolina, for being a disorganized organization. Um, I think every team in Carolina is just in, in shambles at the moment. You know, the shame of it all in reality, right? Is the fact that they went out and got Bryce Young. They got the guy. CJ Stroud had the type of season he had last year. The year after Lovey did that to hook up the Bears. I mean, that's an MVP right there. It's the the way the way that this team has turned around. I can't. I, I'd have to say in in my lifetime, I can't remember a draft that leaves me as excited as this one does. And that's only based on the first two picks in the first round. You can't, you can't tell me anyone in the, I mean, obviously there wasn't no one else really. I mean, other people did, but I mean, like to that caliber had two first round top 10 picks and to come away with these two guys, it was just like, again, a masterclass. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the tackle that we picked up, um, I'm not even going to try and say his name yet. (laughs) It's, it's Kieran Amagaje. I'm a gadget. Okay. Um, you know, the, the only thing I, you know, cause, uh, supposedly he had hamstring injury. So therefore like he didn't finish out the season last year. I think he only played six games from what I had heard. Um, sounds like he's a fantastic athlete and everything, but he wasn't able to do much at the, the combine. And then, uh, he, you know, the rumor was, had he been able to go to the senior bowl, and do everything at the combine and everything that he probably would have worked himself into a second round pick. Um, so uh, again, we got him a little later. Beautiful. Um, you know, the, the one thing I did say that when we took a punter, I wasn't exactly, you know, happy about that <laughs> because um, Van Pran, the center um, was still out there on the board. And I feel like we still need a center and we still need some interior offensive line. Um, so when Van Pran was out there, I, you know, I thought that was going to be the pick. And then all of a sudden, you know, we drafted a punter and I'm like, like we had a center right there, like staring us in the face. Um, so, you know, polls must be really high on this Bates guy that, you know, he's tried to acquire before in a draft pick and then finally was able to trade for him this year. So he must be really high on Bates to once again stare a center down the barrel of a gun and say nope i'm gonna go take a punter instead Um, i think it's i think it's not just baits but i think it's you still have you're gonna have roster cuts right they're gonna come across so i think it's that i i think that he's again i i think he's playing chess when we're all sitting here like learning how to play checkers right i think there's certain things that he already had in mind and you look at tory taylor you know that when we had the intro of the show with the the guy from from uh, uh, England, the the international player of the year or the international fan of the year, who says the best team in the NFC North, the best team in the NFC, the best team in the NFL, and then he comes out and he said, and he, as an Englishman talking about a punter, he brought they brought a punter. Uh, the the big thing, the, the thing that was stupid was that Rich Eisen had to stick his beak in there and start talking while the guy. Oh my God! Shut the hell up! You step all over it. 24 hours in in a three-day span. You can't shut up and let this guy just sit there and talk. Like, shut up. And then the the funny thing was like, oh, man, you got an Englishman to say punter. Like, that was kind of funny. But look, when when you look at how bad Iowa uh, Iowa, uh, football was historically through the season, terrible, he was their own. He was their MVP. And you got this Aussie kid who can pin it down. You're looking again. I'm when, when I talk about uh, uh, chess and not checkers, you're looking at your defense. We know that we can pin you back and we're trying to get Caleb the best possible field position that you can get. Right. This is not built overnight, but um, again, was this is a couple of off seasons now. Peace. Well, by- according to Caleb though, we're not going to be punting. That, that was so, that was fantastic. So he, according to according to Caleb, if we're not going to be punting, that's a wasted pick, isn't it? No, like when we have taken the center. <laughs> I love. I absolutely love that he calls up. He's like, "Hey, hey, buddy, happy to have you on board. We're not going to need you that much." That is just like 
I don't, I don't know, man. And then Roma Dunze comes out and says, I already hate Green Bay. When I see the yes. color green, it makes me want to puke. That was the highest, uh, uh, the, the highest uh, um, share, the highest thing on our page this week. It had like 1,600 shares. And I meticulously made all those dra- <laughs> all those draft graphics for each player, right? I got some more stuff coming in, in uh, down, the, down the line. But that was the one. It's that hatred of Green Bay. I've been talking to, to Packers fans on Facebook, and I'm already seeing them. It's like, man. I really hated the, the this draft for, for us as a Packers fan. We hate what happened because now the Bears are actually a threat. Now, Adunze, Caleb, Tory Taylor, Amagaji hasn't taken the field in the NFL yet. We right. don't know what's going to happen, but damn am I excited because, I like I said, I don't think I've seen, even just with those first two picks, a draft like this for our Chicago Bears. It's been- yeah, I mean... Go ahead, go ahead, Jason. Yeah, one of, one, of, one of the nice things is, like I said, with Am- uh, Amagaji, um, we've we've really been kind of filling that backup role with you know some some veterans there that you know like yeah they're filling in, but th- this guy's like a high end like can actually be a starter um, potential guy. So to have him, you know, God forbid any injuries happen to Wright or Braxton Jones this is going to be perfect to have him waiting in the wings. Um, like I said, we've really, like I said, we, we haven't had that guy that, you know, could fill in on the offensive line, could be, you know, a swing tackle, can be a whatever. Like I said, we, we've really struggled with that. So to, to see that as a need and fill it, that to me is perfect. Braxton Jones, all Braxton Jones, also will be coming up on a contract. I think within next year or the year after. So again, maybe uh, a year or two to get his feet under him. And like I said, maybe we move on from Braxton and we don't pay Braxton what a left tackle needs to be paid. We keep that salary cap low um, from that position, and we keep paying some other uh, some some other players. So. Like I said, yeah, I mean, there's there's so much to be excited for and ready to ready to roll. I mean, the the only problem I see is you know, the Lions had a pretty good draft, the Packers had a pretty good draft, and you know, the Vikings, eh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, but I mean, our our division alone, I mean, it's there's so much going on. It, it's going to be a brutal. It's going to be exciting, battle, you know. It's going to be an exciting, but, exciting season with everybody in the NFC uh, North to be competitive for once. You're going to have all these seats. So you, you're going to rebuild these rivalries. Obviously, you have the Green Bay and the Chicago Bears, right? But now everybody's gunning for that number one spot. And everyone's almost on that even playing field at the moment. And obviously, we have Green Bay with a uh, was it second-year starter now, third-year starter with uh, Love over there. Uh, you got Detroit, who really has uh, golf. Uh, firing on all cylinders, and they have a point offense and good defense and a hell of a coach over there. Um, Minnesota's a hot mess right now. I don't know how they're going to fix that whole situation. Uh, the Bears are up a young and upcoming team that's going to go out there and punch people in the face. Like, oh, no, I'm on the block now. It's my block. And that's what that's what you want. That's what Caleb's is saying. It's like, no, I got a weapon here. I got a weapon there. I got a weapon there. Hey, uh, that punter we just got? He's just going to sit on the bench and just carry my clipboard all around all season because he we ain't punted. We're going all four downs, and we're going to shove it down your throat. That's what we're going to do, and I really love that. I really love that. We needed that attitude. We haven't had that attitude since we had, like, uh, Mike Brown and, and Erlacher and all those guys, that defense. They had attitude, and people were scared of that defense. That's what we need, and finally, it's on the offensive side. So it should be very exciting. This is going to be probably one of the most exciting bear seasons upcoming bear seasons of, of our lives uh, and we've been what 42 years 43 for for iraq i mean it it's it's so crazy because we've always been known for the defensive team that runs it down your throat and, and you know we're, we're gonna play black and blue uh you know football now it looks like what is it, well what's the what's, what's the football game where there, there's no rules and you t- you just uh blitz blitz yeah <laughs> like we have all this, we have all this firepower. We're just gonna throw it over over everybody, and you know, we're gonna get hit, flip over, and keep running. You know, it it, it feels like a video game. We really have a, a video game roster right now, and you know, pray to whatever God you pray to that these kids do develop into what we expected them to develop into. Um, 
to address a couple things that you guys said. Uh, Kirian Amagaje. Hey, I got it right. Sure you did. <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I looked up uh, what they said about him. He says, from a size and athletic standpoint, uh, Kirian pops on film because of his rare length, light feet, and smooth body control to mirror pass rushers or create momentum as a run blocker. Though he has, though he does a great job repositioning his hands and feet, his inexperience is also apparent when it comes to timing and adjustment fundamentals. So he will not be starting week one. That's okay. He's going to learn under Braxton Jones, uh, under Larry Borum, and you know he'll come off the bench. You know he'll spare them, and then he, hopefully by the end of the season he should be starting. He, he, I mean, he's definitely a project. I think. I think uh, they came into it knowing that. I, I think they. I think Ryan Poles did his research on this guy, and and I will uh, uh, speak on the fact that he is a local guy who went to Yale. And I'm not. Uh, you, none of you can sit here and tell me that you. Oh, I've watched all the Yale football games because you're full of shit. Like you're a liar, flat out. Like no one watched Yale football. His mom was like, "Wait, Yale had a football team? Like that's how? Like, but, but." Look, they did their research. They they saw and and like JC said, you know, if he didn't have that injury, he would have he, he probably would have popped somewhere in the second round, you know. So, but he but w- when I mention him, you know, going to Yale, what that tells me is you're talking about another well spoken, intelligent, respectful cat. He's not going to sit there and be like, well, I don't, you know, like Odell Beckham, like always push back against somebody. Well, you know, I'm I you can't tell me he's going to be. The, the dude that will appreciate his 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 spot in the NFL is the same way that Dunze speaks. He's a very well spoken, intelligent guy. Same thing with Caleb. I think even with with uh, Tory Taylor, when you heard him speak, he, you just heard him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can't wait. Yes, sir. I'm excited. This and that. Sir, 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 sir. I don't call nobody sir. <laughs> right? Like so. I mean, he's way he's better than I am. You know what I mean? As far as like that kind of uh, attitude. But yeah, I mean, like um, I, I think they did a really really good job of looking at high character guys um what the, the the kid from last year that they passed on that was losing their mind about jay what jaylen thank you jaylen carter I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that I'm, I'm so good with that because you you started to build your line starting with Tevin jenkins going down the line piece by piece by piece even even braxton jones they felt good about him they, they he is a draft pick of the bears you know what i mean so you look at what they were trying to build, um, you know, giving up draft capital this year to bring in players that they think could be difference makers like Montez Sweat, right? Like, again, DJ Moore, so on and so forth, even bringing in Keenan Allen with that fourth round uh, pick that they traded to the to the Chargers. I, get, I can't stress enough when I talk about checker or chess versus checkers. He He's cooking, man. And, and, and look. We didn't, we're not talking about macaroni and cheese from the box, right? We're talking about a full, like, back in the day, MacArthur's. I heard it's not very good now, but if y'all know soul food in Chicago, MacArthur's back in the day was the spot, and that's where Ryan Poles was cooking when he first came to Chicago when he was on the Bears many years ago. I haven't had that. So. Oh. I have, I have, I have, I have soul, sole or something like that in Chicago. I mean, that's very popular, so. so. <laughs> oh, it's the same thing. Uh, All right, so. So the Bears did also. Everyone thought that they're. They, that, I think that was part of the outrage when they got uh, Taylor, uh, the punter from Iowa. They're like, "That's your last pick of the draft." Well, guess what the Bears did? Guess what Ryan Poles decided to do? They got the uh, the uh, fifth round, 144 overall pick, and they traded their fourth round pick uh, next year to the Bills. Another Bills trade, so they can move inch back into the draft, and they picked up uh, defensive lineman Austin Booker uh, from Kansas. He was like their top tacklers their top everything on the, on the line so they're they're a lot of people were high on this kid obviously you know when you get that late draft you know you're, you're not getting like the five star but guess what people get drafted in later rounds all the time richard dent was drafted in the eighth round which doesn't exist in the nfl anymore okay, okay. so again he went after a guy that he thought could be helpful and productive to the team and i i, I gotta say we gotta see how this draft is gonna play out but so far, Claypool was the one hiccup that I've seen out of polls. We, again, we got to see how everything goes. If, even with that punter, I know JC hated that pick. But even, but I mean, like, well, well, I, I don't even remember the damn uh, the guy they had before. But he stunk. He stunk. He was a seventh round pick punter. You get this guy right here. There was a lot of teams that were high on on, on the punter. So, I mean, you look, you 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 
you miss on 100% of the swings you don't take, right? You got to take a swing. I, say, like, I don't, I, I wouldn't necessarily say like, I hate the pick to me. It was just like, there was nobody that wanted to trade up. Like we couldn't have gotten, you know, an, another fifth or seventh or, you know, anything, you know, to move back 10 spots, you know, to, to me, that was my only question is like, you know, like, there was nothing available. Nobody. No. All right. You know, and again, if, if we were going to move up and back in with the hunter and whatever pick to grab the punter, then that I would understand. But like I said, to, to me, the fourth, you know, like I said, I thought it was a little rich for my blood, but um, you know, it is what it is. I, I get, I get the point, you know, we're, we're working on field spacing. Like if we can't drive the ball down the field, we're going to pin you within the 20 and then our defense is going to, you know, hold and, you know, stop you from getting down the field. Um, now as for the edge rusher that we did pick up, um, he definitely fits that body type that Fluce and, um, polls likes. What is he? Six, four, two fifty, or two sixty five. Um, so he's definitely in that body archetype um, that they prefer. They like they like those tall, long arm um, defensive ends. The only problem with him is, you know, from everything you read, like he only started, I think it was like one game last year. Um, so he was kind of more of a rotational guy from the sounds of it. Uh, sounds like he's one of those high motor, you know, chase you down from behind kind of guys. So, you know what, if, if, he, if he gets with sweat and, you know, we can hopefully get him trained up, get him some secondary, you know, other than just bull rush, um, hopefully he becomes something, you know, like I said, he's, he's got the body type, you know, that they like, you know, you, you can't teach that body type, you know, you, there's only so many guys that are six, four, six, five. Um, now the only thing is on his, um, uh, draft whatever report um they basically said you know he he didn't have much bend didn't have much dip so again getting around that corner could be an issue for him in the future but like i said if if we teach him some spin moves we teach him some other moves that don't necessarily have to do with him dipping and getting around that edge maybe coming back inside like i said you know i hope he becomes a guy you know um but like I said, I mean, with everything we walked away with in this draft, there's nothing to be mad at. Like I said, we we got a punter that's going to bury you deep. Um, you know, I think it was, there was a statistic for the punter that in a hundred and I think it was 145 attempts, he had like some ridiculous like rate of pinning you within the 20. Um, I think, or maybe yeah. it was like 145 so, of, of his attempts, 145, he was able to pin you in the 20. He he had a 46.3 yard average on punting, over 4,400 yards. Uh, he had 32 punts inside the 20 yard line this past season, uh, and led with 29 fair catches. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, his 11.9. Yeah, over his career, I think it was like 145. Um, where he, 145 times he pinned it in 20. Um, so he's accurate over, over his college career. So, I mean, that's, and again, they were showing him like he punted 70 yards, you know. So even, even though the average is 46, <laughs> that just means your offense got a little further down the field than normal. Um, but like I said, to, to, to have a guy that can pin you down there deep, um, you know, the other problem is like we, our punter was not very good. I would like to see um, us bring in some more legs um, for training camp because, you know, I know Cairo Santos has been a good kicker for us, but his his uh, length is 52 yards max, which to me is not very good. Um, you know, when you look around the league, some of these guys are kicking 62, 64. And like I said, to have Cairo maxing out at 52, but listen, listen, we got we got a great punter. We got Williams. We ain't gonna need to kick like that. I mean, we gonna need more. <laughs> listen, you know, what are we talking about here? What are you, we, we put we put points on the board no matter what. Well, right. Right. If we get across that fifty, if we get across that fifty, I want points on the board. 
We're the not kid, even getting extra points. We're going for two now. That kick in 50 yards, man. Listen, I got a I got a brand new robotic leg, bro. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm kicking it from the Green Bay. I don't care about the win off the lake. Let's go. Yeah. Like I said, to, to me, it's, it's just one of those. Like I said, if because what was it last year? Like we got into a game and it was a windy game, mm-hmm. and they basically got to go for it because his legs. Yeah, you know I mean, like so. To to me, like I said. I wouldn't mind bringing in a few more camp legs. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, if, if Cairo still is the best you got, then fine. But, you know, like I said, I'm all, I'm all for competition. So, like I said, no, hopefully it, we can bring in a couple more camp legs and see what we got. It's funny that you say that because Ryan Poles came out and says, it is going to be difficult to make this roster. Okay? He's mm-hmm. looking for upgrades at every single position. You can tell there's positions that he's comfortable at, right? You look at, like I said, last year's offseason, bringing in the two linebackers, shoring up Jalen Johnson, you know, looking at uh, going across the board, looking at the defensive moves that he's made in, in the uh, in the secondary. He seems very comfortable with the moves that he's made as far as that end of the, uh, that side of the ball. There's, of course, a couple, you know, you know, looking for, I mean, uh, uh, Ngakwe still in play, right? Like, He's a guy that that, that what he had a broken ankle last year. But again, when that's when I talk about like some of the 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 veteran free agents that are gonna be out there, just like last year, Ngakwe didn't sign until like they were getting ready to take the field, right? So like there's definitely options out there. And you look at the like the the kid they just brought in, uh, we were just talking about he the first thing he did in his press conference was go up to Montez or talk about being excited to learn from Montez Sweat. Now, there was a lot of debate whether they should have went after Chase Young because he's a couple years younger than than uh, Montez and all this stuff. But guess what? Montez plays younger than Chase Young. And Chase Young, I mean, what, did he even get, did he get a deal yet? Because he went to San Francisco in the trade. He was a free agent. So I haven't, I haven't heard his name in a while. Crickets. Yeah, honestly, I don't I don't even know if he got picked up yet. Um, but to me, like Ngakwe, like I know he's a name out there, but he didn't really impress me very much last year. I know he had some injuries and stuff last year, but to me, like we we, we definitely can't give him the same contract that we gave him last year. Um he, he's gonna have to come in for a little less money if that that's just my opinion. Um, like I said, looking at the roster, I mean we upgraded a safety. Um with uh i'm blanking on his name now but we replaced um ejax um in, in my opinion the the safety we got now um huge upgrade um buyered buyered there we go um so to me like that is a huge upgrade in the secondary um you know we got stevenson we got gordon we got um you know, Jalen Johnson. Um, so, so like I said, I mean, we're, we're looking pretty good in the secondary. I know uh, the second game we went against the Packers. I mean, they, they kind of just tore up with these under dink and dunk in like finding the open zones. Um, and they kind of just move the ball down the field. On us. So like I said, we got to find some way of, you know, fixing that. And, you know, but to, to me, like I said, uh, Getting getting an upgrade to EJ was such a huge move um, in the off season uh, because I mean unfortunately EJX he doesn't tackle he doesn't want to tackle he has no interest in tackling so to me to get Bayard in and like I said that that to me is a huge upgrade. So just a quick look here um, at a couple of the other uh, free agent signings they made. Uh, Jake Curham, who is an offensive lineman, uh, firmly from the Seahawks. Uh, Byron Curry, uh, is D-line from the Texans. Uh, Jake Martin, from D-line from the Colts. Uh, everyone's favorites, uh, Bum Dante Pettis is back. Yay. <laughs> so, uh, and then, um, what what is his name? I just said his name. Simone Biles' husband. He's here, too. He's here, mm-hmm. too. And guess what? They already love Chicago way more than Green Bay. <laughs> how how easy is that you know what i mean like you went from a town that has one thing going on eight times a year to you know the best summer city in the world yeah well simone said she was happy not to have to jump on two planes to get to one place you know 
Um, so now she could just hop on a plane straight to Chicago. Um, oh, and don't forget, don't forget DeAndre Swift. Do not forget DeAndre Swift. I mean, that oh, right there. Yeah. You you look at um, again. I, I can't stress enough checkers or chess versus checkers. It's been upgrades at every position. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy what what Poles has been able to do in three seasons. Being able to undo what the other Ryan did. Right. Yeah. All right, boys. Let's yeah. For me, it's, it's it's more of the depth now. You know, like I said, it's making sure. Like I said, you know, uh, taking the offensive tackle this year in the draft, perfect. That builds our depth, right? So now we are a little more secure. If there's an injury that happens, like I said, we we got somebody waiting in the wings that you know should hopefully be a decent player ready in the wings. You know, and, and that's the thing is, you know, you look at some of these teams, the Houston Texans now, um, you know, I mean, the Steelers had an amazing draft um, this year. Arizona, you know, they had 11 something picks. So they, they built their depth now. Like I said, they got a ton of like roster depth sitting behind them, ready to go. So to, to, to me, like I said, you know, that that's where the Bears need to be. You know, like we're talking about Dante Pettis. Well, yes, he's not that guy, but again, he's going to be battling with uh, Scott and oh god, who's the wide receiver that was like twenty six years old when we drafted? Valus Jones. Valus Jones. There we go. So, like I said, you know, I, I think Valus may have a role on this team just now because of the new kickoff and punt return. Um, rules that have changed, so I, I think he may have a role with that. That's his job is to carry everyone's bags. Go home. Oh, Go like like I said, I, I think he has a role as a punt and kick returner now with the new rules. Um, I mean, even Dante Pettis potentially. You know, I I don't know uh, who or what Pettis's role was. You know, maybe he was a punt returner more last year or whatever. But listen, like listen. I said, it, it's it's decent depth. Um, you know that Pettis has played a role, and he had a decent role with San Francisco when he was like a, a freshman or sophomore in the league. Um, his he, he roll out did, no way. That should be his role. I'm tired. Look, yeah. we we've we we've upgraded all these positions. We, we got to stop letting these bums stay here. Pettis don't. We don't need Pettis no more. Go go away, right? Tyler Scott, you got it. You brought him in from Cincinnati because he was a fast young guy. He, he he had a problem holding on to the ball. Look, you you like I said, Ryan Poles came out and says it will be difficult to make this roster. Okay. Yeah. You still got you still gotta look at, at uh the, the free agents out there, make your moves. I, I'm I'm good with Valis Jones being gone. I'm good with Dante Pettis being gone. Backfill your roster with guys who they just couldn't afford to pay on another team, but still so, still could be valuable to an NFL team. I'm tired like I we're we're refreshing. We can get rid of the garbage now. Get yeah. just toss it out. And let's keep going. Let's keep moving. Move forward. Yeah, the, the, the one guy that I told you guys about last there, you know, once we had uh, already already signed off, um, the one wide receiver that I kept an eye on was Malik Washington out of Virginia. Um, you know, he was a five foot eight and maybe three quarter guy. So he's he's a smaller guy, one hundred and eighty five pounds, but he's one of those Wes Welker types. You know, he. 114 catches in college last season, 1,400 yards. I think it was eight, eight or nine touchdowns, um, but only three drops on all the targets that he had, which I think he had like 140 or 150 targets. Um, he only had three drops the entire season last year. Um, and where did he end up? The freaking Miami Dolphins. That, that was the one guy I was keeping an eye on, you know, as as a very late round guy. And he ends up going to the Miami Dolphins, where, you know, the, like they just the speedster. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah. I did see the guy. Yeah. All but, right. Like, like I said, let's yeah. take a quick break, real quick, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, go into what's going to go on next with the Bears, especially with free agency and uh, the depth chart. So we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. This is Chicago. Doors. Oh. 
this one. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. <laughs> Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out GritClothingCo.com and use the promo code TrueFan15. TrueFan15. For 15%, 15, 15%, 15%, 15%, 15%, 15%, 15%. off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's GritClothingCo.com and use the promo code TrueFan15 for 15%. Percent off of your entire order. Hey guys, it's Steven. And this is Sean, and you are listening to True Chicago Sports Fans. Don't forget to listen to No War on the Weekend, new episodes on Monday. You can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Yeah, so we're going to go do a couple of shots, so let's kick it back over to Big Z. No War on the Weekend. Welcome back to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast with Big Z in the house. We got E Rock and we got JC Dynasty Fantasy Football. It has been all bears all day, all night, all summer until opening day. It is literally going to be like that the rest of the summer because you know the White Sox suck, the Bulls suck, the Blackhawks suck, uh, the Cubs may make some noise hopefully, uh, but you know it, it is super refreshing to be on the positive side talking about the bears it's going to be fun talking about them for 16 uh 17 weeks during the season plus the preseason but them tickets are going to be hard to get now especially if you're going to go to uh Hallis hall for training uh what is it the uh, yeah yeah training yeah. camp training yeah. camp we went there uh, the many right? camp training camp yeah we went up there a couple years ago um it's going to be hard to get up there and uh you know those tickets are going to go for premium and I'm going to have to call in a couple of favors again. Um, so we, we, we got the draft covered. Ryan Poles gets an A for his, uh, his draft grade. I know drafting a punter in the fourth round, like JC is, is a little rich, but we've been saying that he's playing chess while, we're, while everyone else is playing checkers. He went out there and got the best special teamer while everyone else was doing something else. So he got he got a specialist. He got a he got a surgeon uh, on 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 the special teams. That's what he got. So now that that's done, we should be looking now at our depth chart and seeing what holes are left to fill. Uh, so if you look, if you guys can pull up your depth chart for the Chicago Bears, obviously we know that a wide receiver we are set. Mm-hmm. At, at at tight end we are set. Yep. Right. Uh, at running back we are set. So on offense, what holes do we have? Uh, that we need to fill. We know we have center that needs to be upgraded. We know that. Um, but what else can we fill? So they they did release the uh, uh, undrafted free agents that the Bears signed. Uh, I'll run that down for you real quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Austin Reed, Western Kentucky quarterback. He started at SIU, finished at Western Kentucky. He was the uh, U- a Conference USC Newcomer of the Year, second team all-conference status in 22. Uh, they brought in Brendan Bates, uh, uh University of Kentucky tight end, um, Ian Wheeler, Howard University running back. He scored kick return touchdowns at Howard in each of the last three seasons, so that they could be looking at him as a returner. Uh, Theo Benedict, he is a uh, University of British Columbia offensive lineman. They went north of the border for this one, so they grabbed a Canadian, so you know he's going to bring all his syrup. Um, Carl Jones, UCLA edge defender. Um, he was actually on the other side of Latu Latu from UCLA. So they, I'm sure, during the uh, the scouting process, they got a good look at him. Uh, Jamry Chroma, uh, he is James Madison D end, another East West Shine, uh, another D end East West Shrine Bowl participant, all first team, all Sun Belt performer, um, and the guy named Reddy Stewart, a true University cornerback. Uh, okay, all Sun Belt first team honoree. So he had nine interceptions and three pick sixes in his college career. And seven of those last seven of those nine picks came in the last two seasons. So you can see where they're going. You're going defensive end, defensive end. You know what I mean? So they again, he, these are guys that you know they might make the team. You're gonna see them in the preseason, but uh that's a couple of guys that they they went after in the undrafted uh, free agency pool. Um, 
it, funny enough, so as far as like the remaining free agents in the NFL right now, you know, as far as um veterans go, a couple of former Chicago Bears with Trevor Simeon and Brian Hoyer. Um, you know, I think you look at what's going on in the in the quarterback room. There, there's definitely uh I, I still think that they could use a uh, more established guy. You also have Ryan Tannehill out there which I wouldn't be opposed to, but Ryan Tannehill is going to be a guy that signs with a team that has like an emergency and someone that gets injured. Um, funny thing today, I think it was either today or yesterday, Zeke, Ezekiel Elliott went back to Dallas, which I thought was yeah. kind of cool. Um, good for him. Um, Cause they don't have nothing going on down there. The, the Dallas Cowboys didn't do a damn thing in free agency. So it's very interesting and, and, glad for my guy, Miguel, who was on the show way back when uh, the firefighter, good for him. He, got Zeke back I guess I don't know <laughs> like I don't know who else, why why you would want him um but I I think they're they're pretty set at uh at uh, running back too but you still got like guys like Dalvin Cook uh Cam Akers Kareem Hunt is a name that I kind of wanted the Bears to go after a couple times Gordon, um you know uh and as far as wide receivers is, is kind of interesting Michael Thomas is still out there um, Michael Gallup, Nicole Hardman, DJ Chark. There's a lot of guys that were names a couple of years ago. Uh, Randall Cobb, the, the, you know, 47 year old receiver that's been following around, uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers for the last <laughs> few, uh, few seasons. Um, Jakeem Grant is another guy that was on the bears at one point, a uh, returner that was on the dolphins as well. So there's definitely a couple of guys out there. Um, I don't care about tight ends, offensive tackles. Um, David Bakhtiari is out there. Now, I'm pretty sure he was injured um, at the end of the last season, and I'd be kind of surprised with the way that Green Bay kind of handles their own guys if he doesn't end up back there in some capacity. Uh, old Bear Charles Leno, who has been at uh, Washington for the last couple of seasons, is out there. Uh, Riley Reef is out there. Jason Peters, who is another guy that's 47 years old. And I think Mikai Becton just signed somewhere else. Um you know, there, there's definitely, again, there's guys out there that can be had, but I think uh, we look at centers, Scott Quisenberry, uh, Brian Allen, Lucas Patrick, who, funny enough, Lucas Patrick came into my job a few months ago. At really? Oh, yeah. You saw him ro- roaming around, and, and I was like, hey, who, who's that guy? And I was like, he's not a very good football player. That's who he is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Connor Williams, Mason Cole, Brian Allen, Lucas Patrick, Connor McGovern, Scott Cuisenberry, and Nick Gates are your um, free agent centers currently. So, I mean, I guess there's names out there, a couple of names that people have recognized, but there's a reason, again, why Lucas Patrick, who uh, was a previous Green Bay Packer, how, why he flamed out here. Um, in Chicago, so there's there's names out there. It's just not, not anyone that you nece- necessarily wants on your team. Um, we got uh, Beto chiming in. He said uh, he was talking about you have to yell for Cubs win uh, and bear down. Uh, we got David watching from Cedar Hill, Texas. What's up, David? Yeah. Uh, yes, he says congratulations on getting the number one pick, Caleb Williams. Thanks, David. It's going to be a fun and exciting season. Um, one thing that we uh, didn't touch on today: uh, the Buffalo Bills are trading uh, Stephon Diggs to Houston, along with a 2024 20, sixth round pick and a 2025 fifth rounder in exchange for a second round in 2025. This is huge. The, the rich are getting richer because the, the way that uh, the way that the Texans looked last year. Uh, and then you add a guy like like Stefan Diggs to this team. Now Tank Tank Dell, yeah. it was news about Tank Dell. He got shot at a party uh, in Miami, I think it was. So it, it wasn't. It didn't seem to be anything major. Uh, seems like you know someone with a case of the bang bangs down there because I think 10, 10 people got shot. Um, I, don't any, I don't think anyone got like very seriously shot, but yeah, I mean it's just you know. yeah. It was it was supposedly a uh, you know because I have Tank Dell on my. Uh, fantasy team so um it was supposedly started out as a fist fight and in an argument and then a uh, young kid with a gun decided to uh go bang bang as you said um so, but supposedly tank Dell was you know minor wound from everything that was said um in and out of the hospital overnight um so hopefully he's good and everything's okay uh with him but yeah, I mean, Houston Texans, the rich just keep getting richer. Um, you know, kind of like the Bears, you know, it's just they're making great moves. They're, you know, 
taking players that from teams that are overstretched on the salary cap and you know we they have young quarterbacks that they can afford to spend the money you know unfortunately i don't know when the salary cap and the quarterback money starts drying up and teams start saying listen we're already paying you 50 million dollars a year we can't go to 60 we can't go to 70 we can't go to 80 like there's only a certain percentage of the salary cap that we can you know a lot to your position and we're starting to stretch that now where you see that you know granite kansas city has done more with less you know they were able to extend uh kelsey today but Mm -hmm. i mean you look at their wide receiver room and i mean their wide receiver room got a little worse because you don't know what's going to happen with rice after that uh vehicle accident on a highway yeah but i mean they haven't been doing very well at drafting wide receivers in kansas city and like I said, they're not spending big money on the position. Their their best corner, they just uh, basically traded away, um, so because they couldn't pay him. So it's it's one, where, you know, you look at was it like maybe eight years ago, nine years ago, you know, Drew Brees and Tom Brady were making twenty million dollars. Now all of a sudden, we're pushing sixty mm-hmm. in a matter of less than ten years. So it's it's a we like teams eventually are going to have to slow down this, you know, we have to top and top and top and top and top and, you know, keep going above and beyond, you know, at some point we, we got to look at a player and go, yeah, you're good, but you're not better than so-and-so. Like well, I, I, I understand you want to be the best paid guy, but guess what? You're not the best player. Situation. That's the situation that Kansas city found themselves in. Right. Because you, you, and, and that's the, the situation that I think the Bears hope that they're in a in a couple years, uh, when you look at the two rookies that they just brought in in, in the top ten picks of the of the uh, of the draft, but I mean you you can't not pay Pat Mahomes right. You have to pay that guy, and that's what really burned them. That's the reason that they don't have Tyreek Hill on, on the team anymore. And and yeah. yes, they and they found a they're they're finding ways to win championships still. But I mean you can see physically what the toll has taken on Pat Mahomes in the last couple of seasons. I mean he's limping yeah. and just dragging his body to the end of the season they i mean they they got knocked out in the very first game of the season when and i think it was kind of a little bit of a foreshadowing to see what the detroit lions were going to do throughout the season when they when they knocked down the door on the the kansas city chiefs in the very first game of last year on that thursday night game but at the end of the day what do you see you see uh mahomes and andy Reid and kelsey once again, hoisting up that trophy. And I, and I think that's a testament to him. And I think that's what we're hoping can happen in, in, in Chicago, right? Whether it's a couple of years from now and Keenan Allen is, is, you know, watching because he's no longer in the NFL and maybe DJ Moore is already aged out at that point, because now you're talking about a Caleb and, and, uh, and Rome being older guys in the NFL, right? That's where you want to be. That's where you hope to be that you have to sit there and like, well, we're good enough to have to figure it out with whoever we have. Martez Van Scalding, whatever the scalding my my skin with the crappy play or whatever the stupid yeah. guy. <laughs> but like the bottom line is, you know, to to me eventually, like, and and I understand, you know, there's all this money from the streaming services coming in and all this stuff, and the salary caps increasing and yada yada yada. But the salary cap is not increasing at the same rate that the player salaries are increasing. Nope. Like I said, I mean, you got wide receivers getting 30 million a year. You got quarterbacks getting 50 to 60 million a year. You got, um, you know, defensive tackles, left tackles. Like, I mean, they're all getting paid. Like the only position not getting paid anymore is tight end and running back. Running back. <laughs> so, um, and, and like I said, it, it's one of those where, Like I said, I I just look at it, you know, for the next five years, and and this was part of it. This is why we didn't stick with Justin Fields, right? So that we could reset that salary cap on the on the on the rookie quarterback scale. And, you know, we have that salary cap to spend elsewhere. So, you know, big up the polls. He made that move, made that decision. Um, you know, going back to our depth chart, I mean, just going over it, you know, looking at, you know, let's look at it. Wide receiver. DJ Moore, 
Loma yep. Dune, yep. Keenan Allen, yep. Bayless Jones, Tyler Scott. Then we got um, Colin Johnson, Dante Pettis, Nasimba Webster, and ODI Hilaire. Yep. Um, left tackle, you got Braxton Jones with Kirian behind. Um, then right tackle, you got Darnell Wright, Larry Borum, which Borum, you know, has been serviceable when needed. Um, right guard, you got Nate Davis. Uh, center right now looks like uh, you got Tevin Jenkins and Braxton Jones. So that's your that's your starting, which um, I believe Tevin Jenkins is a free agent next year. So we'll have to look at that next year, um, potentially in the draft. Running back, we got Swift, Herbert, uh, Roshan. Perfect. And you got Travis Horner as kind of that uh, smaller scat back role. Um, to me, like I said, looking at this, you know, we really need to see hopefully Zach Pickens, who we took last year in the draft. Hopefully he comes along this year um, because we did lose um, one of our defensive tackles or quote unquote nose tackle. Um, in the off season, but you look at, you got Montez sweat, Andrew Billings, um, Jervon Dexter, senior Demarcus Walker, TJ Edwards, Tr- Tremaine Edmonds, uh, Jack Sanborn, um, linebacker, maybe depth wise, we could use some depth there, uh, behind TJ Tremaine and Sanborn. You know, I don't know that we have, you know, that linebacker behind that you would really trust um if one of those guys goes down um strong safety you got brisker and owens that's perfect um you know you got buyer to free safety maybe we could use something behind him um but other than that uh kyler gordon stevenson and um, jalen johnson so uh and who was the rookie last year? Was it Terrell Smith that was kind of playing uh, when Gordon was hurt? Um, he was a great option as well um, behind those three starters and Stevenson, Jalen, and Gordon. So, like I said, you know, uh, Trenton Gill, um, who was our punter last year, um, you know, he wasn't the best punter. So, you know, we go out, we get a young punter that can punt 70 yards. Boom. There we go. You know, we're, we're moving on. Like I said, Cairo Santos, I would really love to bring in a camp leg to go against him. Somebody younger, a younger guy from college, you know, that hopefully can, you know, punt more than or kick more than 52 yards. But other, other than that, looking at the depth chart, I'm not mad at it. Like I said, you know, uh, you know, I think center and right guard, would be the only things I'd be looking at like long term um in the way of you know having some depth there for the long term. But other than that, I'm I'm not mad at anything on our depth chart right now. No, I I actually kind of like what uh, Nate Davis brought to the table last year when you saw him uh when he was healthy. He seemed like a, uh, yeah. a and that, and that's the thing is when he was healthy. He well, he was yeah. healthy last year and last year. So that's the thing with any position; it doesn't matter. But I, I think he mm-hmm. does have the, the talent there, um, and I, I think that if I'm not mistaken, he did have a couple of uh, mental health issues that he was kind of dealing with, and that's what really what held him back early in the season. Um, yeah. Physical injuries are, are are what they are. You can't, you know, you can do whatever you you can as far as training and things like that to help it. But I mean, I, I do I do appreciate the fact that um, the NFL has really taken the initiative to focus on mental health for a lot of players. Um, there was a story that came out. It was Jerry Rice's son who was just drafted. I, I forget which team he was drafted to, um, but he, I, he either directly after the draft or or instead of attending the draft, he went to attend the funeral of a, a former teammate of his who, you know, they found uh, passed away in his apartment, and it seems like it was self-inflicted. So it, it's it's there's a lot of things going on um, as far as, like, the NFL really taking the initiative and and – and pointing that out and making sure that, hey, it's not just a physical thing, it's a mental thing. And and for anyone who watched Ted Lasso, great that's, show. 
anyone that watched Ted Lasso knows how important that is to not just the, the mental health of an individual, but the mental health of a team and how they support each other. And, and, and I think that's one of the more encouraging things about um, a guy like Caleb Williams is because he's all about that. He's all about bringing everyone up. You notice that he has made contact with, like I said, with every draft pick that they made. Um, he, formed a connection with the Dunze before they even made the draft. And, you know, Dunze was flying that plane. So we all know what was going on over there. Um, he was one, flying that's, that was the, like, Hey, they were on the plane together. They must be, you know what I mean? That was kind of, but one, one, um, one name that was really, really stands out to me is uh, Jerron Dexter. Okay. Um, he was a guy that really seemed to, that they were really high on and he really seemed to kind of come on, especially towards the end of the season when they got sweat, they got someone to kind of play on the other side. So it'll be really interesting. Uh, I'm not the other side next to him. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how he's developed in this, in this off season one. And, and I, I really do think that as silly as it may sound, but bringing in a guy like uh, Caleb, like a Dunze and the way that they speak and they're, they're, the fact that they're well-spoken and intelligent, I think that bodes well for the mental health of the team. It's again, as weird as that sounds, but when you have guys that seem sure of themselves seem like, yes, look guys, like we're going to have ups, we're going to have downs. I mean, you all have been part of a team, whether it's been playing or coaching, you understand that there is a dynamic when it comes to the people that are around you that helps you out with your success because confidence is 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 infectious it's contagious right so when you look at the way that um you know rick grimes uh, i'm sorry uh matt eberflus has has come on in the last like few months and the way that he communicates with his team um i i think we're in a really good spot seeing polls confident not just when he's out there talking about the players, but when he's talking about the moves that he's made, when he talks about his relationship with Ibra Flus, his relationship with the rest of the coaches, um, Kevin Warren being around to support everyone. I, I, I think that this is, it, and it's been said on multiple shows and multiple times, this is the best situation for a rookie quarterback to come in, come into in, in ever. You could say that if you want to. Um, I, I'm not going to dispute that. Yeah, I, I would say the Vikings are a very close second this year. Um, I mean, with their wide receiver core as well, with Jordan Addison and Jamar Jefferson, um, they don't have a terrible offensive line. Um, like I said, I, I don't think they got as good of a quarterback as we did. Um, but, I mean, it, like I said, it, they definitely put, of all the positions... I think the command, it was us, the commanders, and definitely the Vikings were the best landing spots for these quarterbacks um, in in that order. Um, That said, you know, talking about Jervon Dexter, he was, of all the defensive tackles that were drafted last year, he was only second to Carter in, like, pass rush and, um, like, uh, quarterback pressures. And even, even that, seeing as where Dexter was drafted versus where um, Carter was drafted. It was like a clear day and night. Like you got Dexter. I, I forget what, uh, what round was Dexter drafted in? Um, but I mean, it, it was one of those, like it was a huge like positional, like the fact that he was drafted so much later than Carter but was performing slightly just below it, it was it was a huge steal for us as bear as bears organization um because i mean he just played very well so like i said hopefully um you know pickens who was i can't remember if he was drafted before or after dexter but he was drafted in the same round i believe um or maybe one round after but they came in together hopefully pickens will you know, maybe year two start making some progressions um, because, like I said, I would love to see that rotation on that front, those front defensive tackles start going, start getting going because um, that would be awesome to see um, just a good pass rush up the middle, good run stuffers. Um, one of the uh, UDFAs uh, that we signed, and I'm not sure if it is Keith Randolph or if it was Jamri Chroma, um, one of those two, um, there was a lot of hype 
um, that he should have been a fifth or sixth round pick, but he ends up going UDFA. So the Bears got potentially a decent prospect there, um, you know, un, undrafted free agent. Um, so hopefully they can come in and, you know, fight for a spot. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of uh, battles out there and uh, signing these undrafted free agents and rookies um, is going to fill out the roster for the Chicago Bears. So what we're going to do, um, and as you guys were you know, mentioning all this, what popped into my head was we have a lot of young talent going around with all the different Chicago teams. If you look at the Bears, it's a new culture. It's, it's a whole new uh, way of thinking, new way of doing things. Um, we have Caleb, who's like like Iraq said, that he's going to be a leader. He's already talked to pretty much everyone that's been drafted, saying, come on, let's go get on the train. We're going to go. We're going to ride this all the way through. Let's go. You, you've got, you know, with the Blackhawks, you got Connor Bedard and uh, Kevin Korchensky, uh, a good start, base to start with the Blackhawks rebuilding. They're going to have the either number one or number two pick this uh, draft. This is a young Chicago resurgence and rebuild for a lot of these teams, and they're coming up all together. I just, I just want to real quick have Big Z say those say what was the other guy on the Blackhawks besides Connor Bedard? Real quick, Korchensky. Oh man, I, this that's my favorite part of the show is just that's why JC. I wish you would have gave him a list of like names to say when you were just sitting there struggling through names. I'm like, bro, this is Big Z's uh, bread and butter right here. I mean, he loves just you know uh, just saying everyone's name wrong. That's my favorite part of the show. Hey, hey, Ron. Ron. Isn't that Korchinski? Sure, Korchinski. <laughs> I look if you don't know how the hell do I know? I'm reading it's K O R C H I N S K I. I mean, I got Polish friends. Look, you just proven that you're from Chicago. That's all. That's all. That's Ukraine. That's living in Ukrainian village. That's what that is. <laughs> I know all the skis, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, <laughs> you, you got the Blackhawks young and up and coming. The Bears completing, you know, this is like phase two of the rebuild. We got, well, I say one more good draft. It's a couple of free agents next year. And man, we are going to be so hot. Uh, okay. you, you got the Cubs. Lots of young talent on that team, right? Uh, you you, you supplement it with some veterans. I think they're a couple moves away. I still think they need, you know, a bullpen, another starter because Kyle Hendricks and Drew Smiley are just ass right now. Um, I'm sorry, Trevor Bauer is cooking in Mexico. Go get him already, Trevor Bauer. What are you doing? We've been saying for two months, three months already, man. I'm just saying he's cooking over there. He's cooking. Yeah, he had nine strikeouts the last uh, thing. The only problem is also he's not cooking against MLB players. So, you know, little little discretion, you know. Hey, did did Mexico beat up on the U.S. in the uh, the, the cup or whatever? I forget what they call it. (laughs) The baseball World Cup or whatever the hell it's called. Baseball World Classic. Yeah, there you go. Mexico beat up on, on the U.S. So, I mean, hey, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. I mean, yeah, but I don't think it's all their stars on one team that Bowers pitching against every day, every day. No, so like, like I said, we, you know you, what? We talked about it. Wagon, weren't you driving yeah. the bus, with Trevor Bauer? What are you talking about? Now? Yeah, no. Like I said, I, I've been I've been driving that bus. Like I said, I've, I've said multiple times. <laughs> hey, for seven hundred thousand dollars, league minimum. Yes, I would sign him. Get him yeah. on the field. Let him show. Hey, I can I can throw a two points what i don't know a 2.45 era you know some something respectable and then mm-hmm. at the end of the season you trade them for you know a future prospect or some picks or you know whatever and, and we move on from them at a league minimum because there's going to be some other team you know if say the cubs are not able to get there or they don't look like they're going to be one of the teams that can seriously compete you know, against the Dodgers or whoever, you know, will be there. Like I said, you know, you could easily flip him for some prospects to another team at a league minimum of $700,000. You know, know, that's not, that's, you haven't read the fine print. So 700 to to start with, and then he's, he wants escalated uh, bonuses. So based on how many wins, how many strikeouts, how many appearances, he'll get paid on those things. So while, Yes, yeah, seven hundred thousand is cheap for the, the team that's signing him at the trade deadline. That could be a five to ten million dollar contract. Well, again, you if want you back in the MLB? Players. You sign what I offer you. 
you you can sit here and say i want escalators and all this other stuff do you want back in the mlb yes or no mm -hmm. you want back in the mlb guess what Th this contract is topping out at four million it, which is fine which is completely you know I mean? fine but the teams have the power but but this is what i'm saying like you want the shot you want to be back in the show i will give it to you but we ain't talking 10 million we're, we're talking somewhere maybe four to five yeah you know i mean we're, we're we're keeping it where at at the end of the season if i need to trade you uh -huh. i can trade you like that that's where we're at now no problem, and, no problem at, with that at all i mean like I said, like you're you're getting him for what you need him for right now and if you're you're waiting for some of the other guys to come up in the meantime, but you mm -hmm. you need to attack, you need to attack that that rotation, and you need to find another another couple of uh, bullpen arms if you really honestly truly believe that when you're fully healthy as far as the offense uh, on the field, when when uh, Suzuki comes back, when you get uh, um, Cody coming back, you know Neris 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 could be the closer for sure. I mean, but he's since he's come to the Cubs, he doesn't have that that uh, that flash that he did with the with the Astros. So, yeah, you know, uh, if, if he can kind of get back in his groove, he can definitely be the the closer to the team. But that means that you have to find someone else to fill those other spots in the bullpen as well. You know, you can't go out there trotting out Kyle Hendricks and uh, Andrew Smiley. You just can't do it because it's again. I talked about it last time. That's a nightmare scenario, right? You get you get uh, Hendricks starting and Smiley like I'm not smiling when Smiley's up there. It's not happening. Oh, you're That's definitely not smiling. Never, no. Uh, I know. So, we, go ahead. Go I, ahead. I do. I do want to mention one thing. We're talking about young young players, and and I think it's it, you, you look at what's going on with the Blackhawks right now. Did they have a great season? No, but Bedard was phenomenal, phenomenal. I mean, he just played his ass off, right? You look at what's going on with the Cubs, Caleb Williams, Roma Dunze. Um, you're looking at looking look at what's going on with the with the Cubs right now. Michael Bush killing it. Killing mm -hmm. at first, Morell is a little shaky right now. He's not really throwing the ball that great as uh from third to first, and and he's not really doing well on offense right now either. Um, but PCA came up, got his first major league hit, which was a home run that was awesome. They 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 struggled in game two uh, against the Red Sox over in Boston, but we did see Matt Mervis make his pitching debut. That was awesome, and that seventeen to nothing loss that the, the, the oh. Cubs took. Um, but but what, what um, really I blame my friends who decided to fly from Chicago to Boston to attend that game. Um, all four of you, if you're listening, you are mushes. You are the reason <laughs> that we lost seventeen to zero. I think they should all they should buy us uh, Italian beefs. <laughs> It's because of that. Look, want, it, yeah, it's three, funny. three of my guys flew from Chicago. One of my guys flew from Arizona because uh, they just wanted to attend the Cubs game in Fenway. I mean, it's probably funny not the best game to attend. As it, I did not realize that they were playing the Red Sox in Boston. And yep. as soon as I learned that, I'm like, every time the Cubs go to Boston, I say to myself, I wish I would have went to that freaking game. I keep wanting to go and I keep forgetting. Now it's not saying that I want to go to Boston in uh, in in April because I'm sure it's shit weather like it is here. Mm -hmm. Man, I, man I, I've never been to Fenway. I really want to go, and that's when else? I'm not going to see the White Sox over there. I'm not. No. I'm not. Yeah. I can't. If I'm going to go um, watch a historic team play in a historic uh, uh, ballpark, it's going to be the Cubs and it's going to be the Red Sox. That's that's still in the bucket list. I'm hoping. But I I I, I want to mention this before we get too deep into the show. We don't have time. I don't want to run out. We talk about young players. We are about to start. We just had the the WNBA draft. We're about to start the WNBA season. Yep. Mila Cardoso and Angel Reese came to the Chicago Sky. Very high picks. There was five members of the media to meet Angel Reese. That is an absolute embarrassment. After you just got two players that just finished winning the last two uh, uh, NCAA championships. Caitlin Clark is getting all the love in the world and good for her. But you as a Chicago media, you as a Chicago uh, uh, um, sports town that loves our sports, how are you just going to sit there and flat out ignore the Chicago sky after they just brought you a championship a couple years ago? You just, yeah, Candace Parker. I was going to mention her. Thanks for stealing my thunder and contributing to the show, David. Hey, but, David's watching and listening, so we love David. <laughs> we, we, you had Candace help bring a championship here. A lot of people are saying she was afraid of Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and all these guys, which, whatever. I mean, like, she's doing her thing. She's making her money. 
Um, but how, how are you it, the, the third largest media market in the United States in the sports landscape? And it's supposed to be an amazing sports town. We got two baseball teams. We got every sport you can imagine here. And you just completely ignore this team. That is that's an embarrassment to the media of Chicago. I, I I'm 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 really, really upset about this. I, you know, I didn't even know when that it was happening. So we need them to be a little bit more aggressive and spend a little bit more money when it comes to advertising these things. Right. Um, if Caleb were to do a Instagram live right now, it would have millions. If the Chicago sky would to go live right now, it'd probably have maybe 40 people. Mm-hmm. Oh, they would, they would turn us off immediately and go to Caleb. Like, yes. like, Oh no, hundred percent. And then we don't blame you. We don't blame you. We don't blame you. We want, we want to know what Caleb, what color Caleb was painting his nails. Um, but it is a, like you said, it is a very much a disgrace. I do support the Chicago sky. I've been to multiple games. I went to the playoff games. Um, it's, it's fun to go down there. It's a good team, but I don't, there's no connection, unfortunately with the fan base right now. And whether it's a male or female that's supporting the team, there's no connection. And I think they are playing in a small venue that's kind of hard to get to. Um, they're playing at the Winchester Arena down right by uh, McCormick Place. And yes, it's beautiful because it's right there off the lake. But at the same time, it's kind of difficult to get there. Would I prefer they played at the uh, Allstate Arena or the United Center? Yeah, but the United, I think the United Center is a little too big for them. They should move that Indiana game over. Town, they'll they'll play in the United Center. That hasn't been they the, the perfect place for the sky to play is where, where the G League plays. Where the what? Um, out out in uh, where where the Bulls G League? Uh, oh, uh what is it? Out the by Schaumburg, uh, the Schaumburg Center. The Schaumburg. Yeah. yeah, they used to play there. Yeah, they but, used to. I mean, to me, like I said, it, it's yeah. You don't want to get too big a venue because I mean. To host events, it's a lot of money to turn the lights on. So you get too big a venue, you know, it's it's a lot. Right. It is. It is. And, and most of those tickets that, you know, you get fans to go there are free tickets. They're free tickets given out to friends and family and the, or to schools. Radio stations. And- right. Exactly. It is a lot of free tickets. They want to get people in the building. And it's a fun time. It really is a fun time down there with the Chicago Sky. Tickets are fairly cheap. Uh, it. The, the stadium is a pretty cool stadium. Remember, uh, me and E Rock went over there for you. Uh, uh, was it not a Bellator fight? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's it's. Li- hey, why not put them at the UIC at the UIC arena? You have college kids there. You can create interest there. Partner up with UIC. Uh, create create a funnel for for, for the talent to go through there. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things you you can do. Yeah, they now- play. It. Now, one thing I will say is that I, I 100% believe that this is on the Chicago sky because listening to the radio today, listening to the the media, you know, I think it was Cap and, and, and Jay Hood and all this, nobody reached out to the radio stations. Nobody reached out and says, hey, this is what our thing is. You yes. have to do what, hey, Tribune, Sun-Times, The Athletic, CHGO, True Chicago Sports Fans, ESPN, yes. call us up, we'll show up. You know what I mean? Like, make deal make it a big deal make it a big deal for all the kids in the city for all the the girls out there playing sports that want to see because there's not other uh women's professional sports in chicago right now right no there yeah. isn't this is how you do it this is how you do it who what uh, our our what girls basketball team won a championship in, in the city oh, no one knows right because mm-hmm. no, one, no one that's not on the news but let's say it's for example let's say it was whitney young you hold a press conference at Whitney Young with with that team. That's going to get press. You're doing it at a CPS school. You're giving back. You're creating a connection with young people. You, you got to learn how to, how to do that for yourself and advocate for yourself. So, again, I am a, a big supporter. I'll be following the games. And, and I I guess they're on – What are they on uh, NBC Sports Chicago? I think a lot of those games are going to be on marquee. Oh, that's right. They switched to marquee. Yeah, a lot of, so a lot no, of games. So no one's games. gonna be watching them. Great. <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, all of us intelligent fans uh, have marquee. No, no. You have to subscribe to marquee, and no one's who. <laughs> God. Hey, Mar- <laughs> Mar- <laughs> Mar- <laughs> Mar- do you have to subscribe to marquee? 
Because I don't. Oh. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk uh, after the show, JC. I need the uh... serious activities. That's what he's talking about right there. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. All my uh, stuff is on the up and up. <laughs> hey, let's, what, one more thing before we kind of get towards the end. Yeah, we'll close out. Up and up. I know a lot of people are are tired of uh, Kelsey, whether it's Travis, <laughs> whether it's Jason. I love Jason Kelsey. I think he's awesome. Came out at WrestleMania when they were in Philly. Yeah. And guess what? He is going to be one of the new hosts on Monday Night Countdown. I'm super excited to see him uh, as part of the media. Um, I, I think it's really cool. Um, another thing that's that's coming out that's sports related is um, the, the roast of Tom Brady is going to be on Netflix. And apparently, oh, Bill Belichick is going to be involved in it. He's going to be there. So we're going to actually get to hear him say something from under the hoodie. Oh, oh the emperor over there. We're going to see him actually make some jokes. So I'm really looking forward to it because everyone always says that he has a great sense of humor. You just never actually hear it uh, unless you're in that locker room with him. Yeah, well, uh, Bill Belichick did not have a whole lot of nice things to say about Caleb. So, uh, you know, hopefully he has better things to say about Tom. So what? He, he hasn't <laughs> been a good uh, talent evaluator in years. He, he was uh, a GM he, there. No, he was a GM there. Who did he draft that was good? Quarterback-wise, I mean, no, no, no. you had Jimmy Garoppolo, you had Brissett. In the I mean, he's done okay years. with quarterbacks. No, I'm talking about talent in the last five years. Top no, talent well, in the last five years. No, he has wide receivers years. and that stuff, no, absolutely not. But, like I said, he's he's been okay at picking halfway okay quarterbacks. Um, so, so, so have know. the Bears. So have the Bears. Right. Halfway okay is... Uh, halfway yeah. okay is right up our alley. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, going back to WNBA, yeah, that's kind of sad to hear that. Um, their PR teams and their their marketing teams definitely need to do a better job. I mean, Chicago Scott, you, I'll, you, I'll work for y'all. Let's do this. Yeah. How do you have two two highly drafted people and then you sit there and just roll roll out a red carpet to an empty, you know, seating area? Um, yeah, like I said, I mean, you know, hey, give us a call. We'll we'll come cover it. You know, like yes, I said, I'll we'll, cover we'll it. talk about you know women's basketball. We ain't got no problem with that. Um, like I said, you know, it any anything that helps, you know, the Chicago sports teams get their recognition, I'm all for it. We we, um, we, we had a long in depth discussion about women's uh, basketball before. It didn't yeah. end in an argument whatsoever. It was great the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, and as as for the whole Kelsey situation, yeah, I could definitely deal without uh, Taylor Swift. Um, but I mean, Tra Travis and Jason, yeah, I mean, I, I listen to some of their New Heights stuff where you know they're constantly talking about Coach Reed or you know anything where you get some insight into the NFL. It's always great to listen and watch. Um, like I said, you know, I just I don't care for the whole we need to pan the you know Taylor Swift now. Or, See, I like Taylor's. I like the fact that Taylor Swift was involved because I have daughters and I know a lot. My my daughters didn't get into it. One is too young. One doesn't give shit. But there was a lot of daughters that a lot of fathers and daughters that watched Super Bowl, watched playoff games, watched football, NFL for the first time, actually bonding with your daughter. Me and my daughter have softball. That's what we bond over. But I'm going to tell you what, as a girl dad, I thought it was really cool because they finally had something to bond over. You had a lot of, like, as silly as it sounds, a lot of guys' wives that were into football because of that. So to me, to, to see, you know, again, the same way we would want to support women's sports, to see them kind of being brought into our world, just like if you were going to watch some shitty romantic comedy that you know you didn't want to watch, and by the end of the movie, you're sitting there with your wife and you got tears rolling down your face. There's nothing wrong with that because what it does yeah. is it makes it a little bit more inclusive. And you're talking about the top pop star in the world. I have no problem with them, you know, bringing her on, on the screen because then, the, the you know, you got your little girl. I, I, I don't mind it. I, I think it was just cool. how much, you know, I, I don't like if, if you want to talk about her, great. But I don't need you to pan to her seven times. Who cares? You know I mean, like I said, to, to me, that's just it's a three hour football game. Who cares? You didn't miss anything. They didn't miss any scoring. There was no touchdowns or a miss. You still heard the whole game. It, it's that, that to me, that's silly. That's as, that's as goofy as complaining about someone painting their fingernails. Who the hell cares? It doesn't change the game whatsoever. Just let the, let the, let the little girls have their like, Oh my God, it's Taylor Swift live. I get, 
actually see her in person on the TV. I, I, I'm completely fine with that. It, it's just, it's I just, can't, an, as a football fan, I'd rather see a replay and going over X's and O's than you're going to see that anyway. Network. That's all they do all day. The 30 seconds worth of screen time that K, uh, that Taylor Swift gets does not change that whatsoever. It's You're not just 30 seconds, though, bro. It's 30 seconds seven times. <laughs> no, I don't think you understand how time works. <laughs> <Was that? laughs> All right, uh, I uh, it's 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 that time, fellas. <laughs> All right, so. This is this is great. This is great, and you know we're gonna be talking a lot more football as the season goes on, uh, as the summer goes on and so forth. But uh, this is great, guys. Uh, but you know what? Let's close the show with uh, a stirring a pot. I got a little something for you. Uh-oh. So uh, let me see. Do I have it up here? Yeah, I, I do have it up here. All right. So you know what time it is. It's time for stirring the pot. And I'll hit the uh, bell because I, you know, we gotta fight a little bit over this because we are going to fight over it. Where's the boxing? Here we go. All right, so I'm going to put this image up on the screen for you guys. Uh, see if I can just draw. Can I draw, move you guys over? Yeah, I can probably edit you guys. Let's see. Da, 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 edit. And let's see if we can make you guys a lot smaller. I see a frosty. That's what I'm Good seeing. Right all right, so you can't see all the images. I'm going to move myself out of there, too. And move you guys over here somewhere. Donald McFlurry, Popeye's banana pudding parfait. Yeah, so McDonald's yeah. apple pie. You've got to choose one. You got the McDonald's McFlurry Oreo. You got uh, Popeye's banana pudding parfait. McDonald's apple pie. Uh, Julie B peach mango pie. I don't know whether one of those is that. Wendy's original frosty. Taco Bell cinnamon sticks or Burger King's Hershey Sunday pie. Woo wee! That's a lot of shit. Right. It, this is easy for this is easy for me. This is easy for me. Cause that that McFlurry is the bummy ass, bummiest ass uh, dessert. You want to you want one of them that actually tastes good? Go to Culver's. Go to Culver's and I was you just about to say, can I go off script? <laughs> no, no, no. You got to choose one of these things. I know Culver's is great. Because <laughs> I'm I'm going Culver's as well. If if that's an option, no, it's not an option. Pick one of these crappy ones. <laughs> uh, they're not all crappy. I'm joking, not all crappy. I'm joking. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you mine, and it's the winner, and because it's the best one out here, and it's that. The Hershey pie from from Burger King is by far blows out whatever weird mango and banana pies that they got out there. That that old ass McDonald's uh, 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 apple pie that they, they it, it was so shitty they used to give it away for like you know fifty cents. Two for yeah, two for a dollar. Banana, banana pudding parfait. Stick to chicken Popeyes. The only thing that could possibly uh, have a fight in this aside from that that Hershey pie is that is the uh, is the frosty. That's the only thing with with French fries dipping in there. I did see a guy from from England who's like, dipping anyone that takes a French fries or chips, you know, they're really called chips and dunks it into something that's sweet is absolutely disgusting. I'm like, bro, you guys eat beans on toast. Shut the hell up. No one wants to hear about your food opinions. That's a reason why your teeth look like that. (laughs) Tell us how you really feel, eh? Tell us how you really feel. (laughs) If, if, if I'm forced to pick one of these, yeah, sir, it, it would have to be the McFlurry or the Frosty. Um, yeah, in my opinion, one. which well, the, the problem is every time you go to a McDonald's, the McFlurry machine's down, so you never get to get it anyway. So you take your butt over to Wendy's, get yourself a Frosty and some fries. I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, like Wendy's, they offer that like buy a keychain, get the little mini Frosty, whatever. Yeah. Like year round for like three ninety nine, it's a hell of a deal. I'm gonna go frosty with with the all year like three ninety nine keychain. You know what? I have to agree with both of you. When he's frosty, lane tech days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, what is a junior bacon double cheeseburger? Whoo! That Burger King Hershey pie. That's probably the only thing I eat at Burger King. Nine, the ninety nine cent nuggets uh, from uh, from Wendy's back in the day. Yep. Yeah, man. And I yeah. had the good barbecue sauce back then. Now it's trash. Yeah. No, no. Right? Now you got to go with the $6 biggie bags. You know, that's, that's the only way you get your money now. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. That's true. But it's weird because Wendy's fries always gave me hiccups. I'm, whatever it was. Yeah, not a, not a big fan of their fries. Especially yeah. when they first came out with sea salt. Oh, my God. They were over salting. It was, yeah, not good. Yeah. I mean, um, they, 
that was their. I remember it was the skin on fries. They're like, try them. You'll love them. And I'm like, what if I don't? What you going to do about that? What you going to do about that, Wendy? You took away my ashtrays and the little, uh, <laughs> the little, remember the little metal ashtrays in the lounge over there? Where, that was, that was the coolest thing about those, those, uh, at, at least the Wendy's restaurants where they had that, that part oh, the side, the little, the little sunroom. That was always really cool. And then we were, I mean, hell, this is aging myself very much so, but we would eat our, our 99 cent burger and our frosty and you just sit there and, 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 you know, rip your cigarettes and sit there because like, guess what? You can smoke inside. No one gives a shit. Yeah. The nineties were awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> absolutely absolutely all right boys this has been a fun time great show uh but we gotta wrap it up i gotta flip this show and put it on the youtubes and all that stuff so um anything else to in closing uh oh. green bay sucks. That, that green bay sucks green and, bay and, sucks yes and, and let me tell you something real quick green bay fans if you're listening your days are numbered your days are numbered because we're coming for you. I don't care how many times you've beat us in a row. I don't care how many guys they love you got on your team. I don't care how many times you guys keep flipping over a damn quarterback room and getting another great quarterback. Your days are numbered. I'm not just talk, I'm talking about the whole NFC North, but particularly the Packers. And I think their fans know that. I've seen a lot of fans get real nervous about this draft. And they're like, oh, shit. Here come the Bears. The least scary uh, mascot in all of NFL. Go ahead and pack your boxes. Go to Amazon. Whatever you got to do, we're coming for you. And it's it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. It's not nearly going to be as pretty as the brand new stadium they put out there that we're all going to pay for, right? No, that's <laughs> no. Anyways, uh, before we leave, I wanted to talk about Caleb uh, already starting promotions and going. That's a new Bears thing to do. Give him the Bears face and and the claws. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, people are like, "Well, that's not his. It was Bears man." And I'm like, uh, the, the thing I found funny about that is that they gave Caleb a hard time about his fingernails. This Bears man been out there in full makeup, full ass makeup for years, for years. No one says nothing about a guy. No one bats an eye. That the fingernails is a problem, right? But makeup is cool. Like whatever. But yeah, I, I, I'm all for it. I, I hope to see like just a bunch of people at being silly. I think that's the cool thing about Caleb, really, because he has a personality that like whether they win or whether they lose, he's going to be emotional about it. He's going to be silly when he needs to be. You know, if they're up like, you know, with, you know, if they end up winning by like, you know, 30 points or whatever, he's going to be silly about it. He's going to have fun with it. You're going to see him doing this all the time. I'm perfectly cool with it. Just. He has the type of personality that doesn't seem like he's going to be too up, too down, but he does have emotion that he brings to the table. And I absolutely love it, especially watching, uh, you know, Justin being very baseline and, and the years of color pouting all the time. I, I'm, I'm all for this kid with all his energy and his, his hype. And, and, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens uh, come August and September. It sounds good. All right, y'all, that is it for today. Thanks, Thank you for listening. A big thank you to our sponsor, 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, and Grit Clothing Company. Don't forget to go to gritclothingco.com and get your official TCSF podcast T-shirt. Search for keyword True Chicago and use our promo code TRUEFAN15 for, uh, at the checkout for 15% off your entire order. That is TRUEFAN15. Get your shirts now. All right, check out the other shows on the 606 Media lineup. You can check out No Water in the Weekend uh, with Stephen and Sean at Pop culture forward podcast that doubles in, in funny trivia and film uh you can check out my other podcast it is called impossicated where i interview interesting people from all walks of life uh all that mine's is on youtube theirs is on every audio version of uh podcast so check those out uh check us out on social media because find us at uh tcsf pod on twitter and uh, find us on tiktok and on facebook ig spotify reach out to us on our email we want to hear from you Reach us at true Chicago sports fans at gmail.com. All right. For E Rock and JC, I am Big Z, and we'll see you next time for episode 193. And until then, be good to each other for the love of sports. Swish.